Okay, for section 10-4, um, for our derivatives, it's the chain rule. So what happens if I have something to like in a parenthesis to like the 20th power? Well, I don't wanna multiply that out and have my separate terms to take the derivative. I have to have some kind of rule shortcut for those type of, of ugly problems. This chain rule also works like, what if you have something other than X under a square root? So you have more than one term or an absolute value or anything that has like a grouping symbol. That, so that's what the chain rule is gonna help us with. So let's look at the note section here. Um, basically it's talking about composite functions. Remember putting a function inside of a function. So if I say F of G or remember it had like, kind of like fog, but it was f of g, or you could use parentheses, um, and you were putting g function inside of f. That idea comes to play. So um, this first rule says, if you have something in a grouping symbol, remember a grouping symbol can be parentheses. It can also be square roots or, um, goodness gracious, logs. I'm trying to think of anything else. So. Um, what we're gonna do is what we would think is bring that in out front like we have been, see? Bring the in out front minus one, but we have to take care of what's inside. And the rule is you can take and multiply by the derivative of the inside. So notice this part stays the same, whatever it was, two X squared plus four, right? Whatever it is. Then you take the derivative of the inside and times it out here, okay? So the idea is, you do what the outside tells you to do, derivative of that. Then you take the derivative of the inside and times it out outside. So that's the whole idea of a chain rule. Um, yeah, this is telling you chain rule, but it is not very pretty. All right. So these first couple examples are like, all right, so what if I'm putting a function inside of a function? or What's the outside function kind of idea? So for problem one, it's saying f of g right here, right? f of g. So we would like f to be our outside function and g inside. So if we did that, here's our f function. This variable disappears and we put a parenthesis there and everything goes inside this one. So hopefully you kind of remember this composite function from your algebra classes. That's what that one's gonna look like. Inside stuff, outside idea. So we have to deal with them separate when we do a derivative. Okay, we didn't, we are doing the derivative of that one, which that's all it wants. Um, let's do, um, well, let's just talk about this. I don't know that we want have to write it out, but what does this one want you to do? Find if this and this, yeah. So find f of g, remember that's how we say this, so g, all of this is going to go inside this u, so it'll be log of all of that, okay, um, yeah, I don't know that I care about three, um, four, oh yeah, e is another huge one that we have as well, because it's got business, um, you know, ideas that work with an e, compound interest, so continuous compound interest. So this one is saying, um, write your composite function in this form and this here. So it's like, what is f of u? All right, basically, what is the two ideas here? Well, the big idea is e to the u power. That's the big idea, the outside idea, e to some power. Okay, the inside idea, which we're calling g of x, is going to be the negative 5x to the third plus 4x minus 23. So outside e, inside ugly stuff in the exponent place. All right. We're just going to start taking the derivatives. So that was just trying to help you see the inside outside. I don't know if I love it. You have a couple problems of your homework like that. Um, I mean, they get you thinking about plugging something inside, but I think we just need to do more of the chain rule. So look at this sucker. There's no way we could multiply three terms 
to the fifth, if I remember right. What is the rule? Um, I was trying to remember how many terms that would become. I, I can't quite remember, but I think it's going to end up being over 20 terms. We are not multiplying that out. It would take you forever. So chain rule tells me I can do what's outside. Okay, so I'm going to bring the five out front. Oh, I'm going to label this as a derivative, sorry. And then I'm going to keep everything the same inside. Same, same, same. Drop this down to a four. Okay, so five comes down. The whole big idea, we're taking the derivative of it. Five comes down. Everything stays the same inside. Drop your exponent. But the new thing says, then you have to times by the derivative of the inside. So the inside we usually refer to as u, and that's 3x to the fourth minus 5x plus 13. We want to find the derivative of that, um, which is du dx, or, you know, whatever symbol you want to use. So 4 times 3 is 12. So that's going to become 12x to the third. And then 5x becomes, excuse me, negative 5x becomes just negative 5. And then the 13 drops off. Okay. So from there, we now have the derivative. So we're going to times this by that derivative of the inside, like that. And that's your answer. Type it in just like that. Okay. So big idea is to the fifth, right? And then we bring the five down. We drop one down. Everything stays the same times by the derivative of the inside. Okay. What is the outside idea on this one? And what is the inside idea on this one? Okay, so the outside idea um, is going to be the log. Okay, what is the inside piece? The inside is 12x plus five. So one way, I mean, this is kind of how um, the example button does it, but it will say, well, the function is going to equal seven natural log of u, and then it'll say the u is the inside is 12x plus five. So it kind of puts a u where the inside is so that you can think about how to take the outside derivative. That might be helpful when it's not just to a power. So basically, what is now the derivative of this? Well, it's going to be seven constant, stay out front. And what was our derivative of a natural log? One over x or one over our x is a u. So we're going to times that by one over x. Oh, you, I just said it and then I wrote x. Uh, whether, whatever the x is. Okay, then over here, du dx, finding that derivative is just going to be 12. So let's put this together. We are now going to put this together and write our final derivative of f of x is going to be, so think of this as 7 times 1 or 7 over u. That might be a little easier. So it's going to be 7 over what's u. u is 12x plus 5. And then we're going to times it by 12. Okay. Well, think of that as 12 over 1. So we can times it by 7 and get 84. And that's our final derivative. So the U method kind of is helpful when you're not, when it's not obvious what the derivative of the outside piece is. Some of you could skip the writing this part but I, don't, I need to write it too, so you probably will. I will do this method for the rest of them because they're not as easy as the first one. So seven, what's the outside idea? E to a power, inside, two X minus three. So if you don't just have an X on your E, then you <clears throat> have to do something uglier. So we'll let Y equal, 7e to the u, and we'll let u equal 2x minus 3. Perfect. Now, derivative, derivative. So derivative over here is going to look like 7e to the u. Wow, that was a hard derivative. e to the u, state e to the u. 
done. Okay, but over here, du, dx, um, you could do the little symbol on the u too. I'm following kind of the path that I learned, which is always to write that part on there, but whatever, it's fine. You could just do the little symbol on it like I do on the y here. You could just go u, beep. Okay, so the derivative of 2x minus 3 is just 2. So put that together, and the full derivative of the function we're looking at is going to be 7e, and then instead of u, you have to put that in, 2x minus 3, and then times it by 2. Okay, so timesing these two together always and adding this u back in. That's all we're doing, timesing them and putting the u back in. So we can times the 7 and 2 and get 14e to the 2x minus 3. So it almost stayed the same, but you have to times basically that 7 by the derivative of the inside. <laughs> so all e functions, you're going to have to do the derivative of the exponent. Okay, this one's another fairly easy one. Um, we can write our U method, um, kind of up to you. I can look and see six times six is 36. And keep everything the same, 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 just like we would put a U, drop one, but then times by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be two X, <clears throat> minus three, done. So when it's an, a power like this one, I just find them to be a little easier because I'm like, okay, six comes down, boop, drop a degree, keep the same, 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 same. That's the biggest mistake right there. And then this goes out here. A lot of people will put the two X minus three in the parentheses. It's like, no, you have to keep it all the same times by the derivative. Remember, these are all shortcuts. You could do the limit method, right? We don't want to do that method. These methods are helpful um, because the limit method is so hard. Um, yeah, especially if you, I mean, you couldn't even do it with a six power, honestly. Okay, so number nine has a square root uh, or a radical, it's on a square root, it's a third root. So we have to think about, all right, this is going to equal the same as 2x squared minus 3x to the what power? Hopefully you said one third, right? Because it's a third root, one third. Now we can see the inside is 2x squared minus 3x. The outside idea is the power to the one third. So um, when we go to do the derivative, the one third comes out front. Everything stays the same, stays the same. What is one third minus one? One third minus one. Two thirds, is it negative or positive? Negative, so it's negative two thirds. Okay, then um, we would have to times it by the inside's derivative. So the inside's derivative, two times two is four. Sometimes it might want this in a parenthesis. It kind of depends. So four X minus three is our derivative of our inside. Now we can take and multiply. We can simplify this, right? We can multiply the one third by this because there's no exponent. Again, we can multiply this by this because there's no exponent. You cannot multiply this here. There's an exponent. So it has to have no exponent. So we can do that. We can also go back to a radical. And then we know a negative can go into the denominator. So there's lots of steps we can do here. Um, let's start. Well, boo, 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 boo. Let's do a fraction. Let's move this radical downstairs. 2x squared minus 3x. So it's negative 2 thirds. I took care of the negative by moving it down. Then I rewrite the denominator here. And you could you could either write the square on the whole thing or you can write it around this piece. I always saw it around what's inside. 
until recently. And then I noticed a lot of the high school textbooks put it on the outside and um, shared in college is 1400. So again, you can do it this way, or there's a parenthesis here with the square here. It's actually the same thing. Okay. So I took care of that whole parenthesis. I still have a one third. So I'm going to put a three here and I'm going to do the four X minus three up here. I was like, I could times the one third by this parenthesis, but my issue was it's still gonna just have a three in the denominator. Four thirds, well, the three over three would, be, yeah, that's just gonna complicate it. This is our simplified version. The most we can. My math lab would take this, I'm 99% sure. This is, if they show you the answer, they're going to show a simplified version. And a lot of people are like, oh, I had to have done that. No, you could have put in this, but it is going to show you the most simplified way possible. Okay, chain roll, chain roll. Yes, we need to do a log. And a log is another one that we really need to cover. So we're looking at this. It's a log to the third power. So that's a little tricky. What is the outside let's write our y. y equals our outside is u to the third it's the whole idea of that thing to the third our inside is the log of 3x plus 7. okay so we know for the for the y equals part the derivative is going to equal bring the three out front keep the u and then square right that's that one Oh my gosh. Over here, we have another chain rule inside our chain rule. So we're looking at this and we're like, uh, that's not just an X inside of a log. So thinking the same Y is the Y, but I'm going to use a different letter because that's weird to use the same letter. I'm going to say V is going to equal the log of, what should I use for the inside letter? Um, well, let's do a capital I for inside. I don't know. Okay, so that's our inside piece. Our inside piece is the 3x plus 7. So I'm doing a second chain rule. I'm like, okay, outside big idea is a log, right? Inside is this. And then I do the derivative of each of those again. So the derivative of a log is going to be 1 over whatever it is um, for your variable. The derivative of this inside piece is just three because uh, the x and the seven go away. All right, put these together, times them together, one over i times three, but you have to replace the i piece back in. So I'm going to have um, one over three x plus seven times three right? Times them together, but you have to replace that. So this one is totally going to end up being three over three X plus seven. Oh my gosh. That is just, this is the derivative of the inside of the whole thing. So now we finally got the derivative of the inside. It took us two parts. Now we can put this together. So we times this by this but we have to put u back in. So this times this, but you have to put u back in. How did I show that? So I did on my paper, I did three, put the u back in. Oh wait, the, the full u has got the log, excuse me. Beep. The full u is log of three x plus seven. So I'm gonna have, three times that squared that, and then I'm gonna times that by three over, I'm gonna put a line here, three X plus seven. Ew. Okay, I can simplify that a little because this part and this doesn't have the exponent. So I can just times this three over here. So think of it as three over one. So really the only simplification I can really do is this is still squared times nine over three X plus seven. 
And I guess you could go like this too, like that. And I usually like to write the nine in front, but either way. Um, so that's our final answer. So that had a chain rule inside of a chain rule. Okay, so I feel like you need one more because sometimes the note packets are a little too nice. Um, boo -boo. Is there a sec? Find the slope of. Okay, so this is problem. Is it 11? Or, yep, problem 11. So what this one is going to say is I want the equation. Of a tangent line. We do so many of these. So we have some function and we're doing the equation of a tangent line because we're looking at one specific spot. So in business, when we're looking at an X value, it's the number of items you sold. So if I'm looking more in depth, I might need that equation of a tangent line. That's why we practice it so much. Um, at X equals five of the function um, x over um, 2x minus 9 to the ninth power. Okay, so I look at that, I got my, I have a lot of things going on, which is why we're doing this problem. We have two things we always have to get for that tangent line, right? We have to get the slope and we have to get a point. And we do that by putting the value of x where we're at, which is at five items, we're gonna put that five into the original to get the point and into the derivative to get the slope. So I can do the uh, derivative first. And this will help with the slope, right? So the derivative is a quotient rule with a chain rule. Hmm, hence the reason we're doing this one. So we're looking at this. Oh, I did it that way. Okay, so one way that some people do is they bring this up here and do a negative nine, but then you have a product rule. So it doesn't really matter, chain rule or quotient rule, product rule. You're not getting out of the ugliness by moving it up. Only if it was just an X to a power. If you start to have anything more, then it's going to be um, a lot crappier. Okay, so we're going to say the top is equal to x. The bottom is equal to 2x minus 9 to the ninth power. So if we go to do the derivative of the top, well, that was easy. One, done, right? One and then, and then the derivative of the bottom, not so easy. So we have a chain rule. So the inside is 2x minus 9. Outside is the ninth power, right? So we're going to bring the 9 out front, keep everything the same, drop the power, and then times by the derivative of the inside, which is just a 2. I want to simplify that to make it 18, 2x minus 9 to the eighth. So we can only simplify the number in the front and the number in the back. We can't simplify a something with a power. Okay. Well, isn't that pretty? Now let's put this all together. We times, um, well, we don't times them. We have our bottom. So original bottom, why am I second guessing myself on my quotient rule? I'm not losing it. Okay, original bottom, do you like that? I was like, oh, um, original bottom is 2x minus nine to the ninth power times that by the derivative of the top, which I forgot to label that as a derivative, which is just a one. Okay, minus the top, which is just x, times the derivative of the bottom. Oh my gosh, all over the bottom squared. So the bottom is 
2x minus 9 to the ninth, and I need to square that. Oh my goodness, that's super pretty. Okay, just kidding. I don't really want to simplify that, and neither do you. So let's not, because what are we really going to do when we're doing a tangent line? We're going to put a value in there. So really what we want to do, so this is the derivative. Just so we remember what that is. We really, because we're doing a tangent line, to get the slope, our x is 5. So we have to put 5 in here. So um, I don't want to write that out. So put in 5. Let's write that for slope. x equals 5 into this. <laughs> and I got negative 89. <laughs> I totally cheated because I have the answer right here. I don't even have a calculator close. Yeah, that's going to take a minute. <laughs> five here, five here, five here, five here. So do the top and the bottom and then divide them so you don't make any mistakes um, with all the parentheses. That'll make it easier. He should get negative 89. All right, then, so that is all just to get my slope. So if I want my point, which I'm just going to do right here because I can, we put that x equals 5, right, into the original function. Not the derivative, but the original function. So that's the 5 over 2 times 5 minus 9 to the ninth power. And I get 5 according to my notes. Let me double check. So I have 2 times 5, which is 10. Yeah. Minus 9 is a 1. Okay. It didn't look right, but that's right. So that becomes a point of 5, comma, 5. So we're going to put this together to find the equation. It's going to be y minus 5 from our point equals slope times x minus x from our point, and we're done. We don't really care about simplifying that. We can still put numbers in. Who cares if it's not simplified all the way? I mean, unless we're going to graph it on a graphing calculator, then we really do need to get that minus 5 to the other side. So we should distribute and add the 5 over. But if we're not going to graph it, we should be good. All right, chain rule. Anything in the exponent of the e, you have to do a chain rule. Anything in a log, you have to do a chain rule. Anything to a power, chain rule. Chain rule, chain rule. Square root with anything underneath, chain rule. All right, let me know if you have any questions.